What is customized equipment? Customized equipment, also known as non-standard equipment, is a type of integrated automated equipment that is specifically designed as customers desire and not circulating on the market. Therefore, customized equipment emerges in various shapes, and it is these different appearance designs that bring about a lot of parts and components that have no matched enclosure or do not have any enclosure at all, so that users can add these components to their own equipment and label their finished products for sales. In this video, we are going to show you a non-enclosure VFD that is specifically built for custom-made equipment. Our non-enclosure VFD includes a keypad, a communication cable, and a body which consists of a main circuit board and a cooling module with a fan. These separate components can be installed where necessary, such as self-designed electrical cabinets, consoles, integrated equipment, etc. And what's the difference between standard and non-enclosure VFDs? First, let's look at their control terminal arrangements. The non-enclosure VFD has a relatively small number of wiring terminals, which include RS-485 terminals, analog terminals, forward reverse control ports, two custom input terminals X1 and X2, along with an input port for 24 volt power supply. The relay alarm output terminals are arranged on the right edge of the main circuit board. Let's move on to their wiring ports on the main circuit. As you can see, the non-enclosure VFD has six ports that are designed for different use. The line and neutral terminals are intended for wiring single-phase AC power supply, and this is the earthing terminal. The UVW ports are used for wiring the motor. By contrast, the standard VFD has a bit more terminals than the non-standard one. In addition to those on the non-enclosure VFD, it has two extra custom terminals, X3 and X4, and terminal G and D for grounding, and another 10-volt analog terminal is added. The relay alarm output terminals are located in close proximity. As to the standard VFD, you can see there are seven holes made on the shell and each hole is coded according to the purpose of each terminal behind. Be aware that there is actually six terminals behind the holes since the L3 terminal is removed to prevent accidental connection. As is labeled on the shell here, for single phase power input, you need to connect L1 and L2. And as we said before, E terminal is for grounding and UVW for motor wiring. The cooling modules of both BFDs are basically the same in terms of construction. They both have several pieces of cooling things as well as a cooling fan, except that the standard VFD has its capacitor located beside the cooling module while the non-closure VFD has its comparatively larger capacitor placed on the bottom right corner of the main circuit board. As you can see, the circuit of the non-closure VFD has been rearranged, which is different to that of the standard VFD. Unfold the communication cable, of which both ends are equipped with an anti-misconnection slot.
Next, we're going to connect the VFD to a motor in order to show how it performs. We have a three-phase motor here for the demonstration. It's 750 watt rated and with 220 volt and 380 volt optional voltage ratings. As our VFD is rated at single phase 220 volt for input and three phase 220 volt for output, we should make sure the motor is rated at the same voltage. For this, we need to uncover the wiring part of the motor and track its specific wiring pattern. Now, taking a Phillips head screwdriver, loosen the screws on the face plate and remove the face plate from the body housing. You will notice that there is a wiring diagram on the back of the face plate and as it's shown, it's a 220 volt rated motor. Then take the screwdriver and tighten the screws on the face plate. Following that, We'll insert the wires from the motor into the UVW terminal screws. Make sure you properly tighten each terminal after inserting each wire. Connect the power wires to the line and neutral terminals the exact same way. The power supply used here is surely rated at 220 volt as specified. So here we have it completely wired where the VFD output terminals are connected to the motor and the keypad is connected to the VFD via the communication cable. Having finished the wiring, we're about to power up the whole circuit. We need to set the parameters at first. Be sure to reference our instructions included to set up the parameters, and it's quite easy to do so on the keypad. Check previous videos about the standard VFD to learn how to set parameters on the non-enclosure VFD, as both share the same setting method. As everything's ready, press start on the keypad and the motor starts running. 
turn the knob on the keypad to adjust the frequency so as to change the rotation speed of the motor. Besides starting the VFD through the keypad, we can also control it via Modbus RTU, analog, as well as external terminals. Learn more about how to operate VFDs in our previous videos. For a good deal on quality non-enclosure VFDs, please visit ATO.com or check out the link down below in the description. Thanks for watching.